Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today we're uh, back on with the um, Dragon 32 um, refurbishment and what we're going to do today is we're going to concentrate on the um, modulator and power board at the back of the um, Dragon 32 here so without further ado I'm going to uh, pop that out and get it on the uh, get it on the bench now these aren't too bad to get out basically uh, they look like they're not going to pull out unless you take the main board out but you can get these out first all you have to do is just be gentle and just ease the little uh, modulator out there bring it up and they will just uh, pop out fairly easily like that we'll get the rest of the dragon out of the way because we're going to look at this in another video for this video I'm going to concentrate on um, this power board here and what we're going to do to it now as you can see we have one two three four electrolytic capacitors there which are um, what we're going to replace and what I thought we would do is we would get a couple of uh, my test meters namely uh, this thing here this is um, cheap Chinese junk and um, well it's not junk but it's very cheap Chinese I think it cost me like five or ten quid something silly like that it was just a little PCB uh, which I mounted in this case and then we're also going to use uh, this which if you watched my last video is my um, Peak Atlas LCR capacitance tester and uh, unfortunately it happened to me again um, the battery failed on me on my camera just at the end of that video so you didn't actually see me putting this back together and I did have a little issue which is that um, new button that I fitted there um, was a little bit proud of the other button so when I put the case on um, it just switched on or it switched on on its own like it was pushing the button in and what I basically had to do was um, I had to heat the top of the button up with a soldering iron and just melt it down a little bit and then file that bit of uh, melted plastic off just to basically just lower it by about a mil and a half and once I've done that as you can see it um, now works fine just, uh, button doesn't feel quite the same as the original one but it does um, definitely work okay and someone else commented in that video about um, my soldering and I must admit I completely agree with what they said um, the truth was I hadn't cleaned my soldering iron um, bit I forgot to bring um, some water up for the sponge and thought I'll just do a quick job on it and someone picked up on it my soldering iron was absolutely filthy you shouldn't use a soldering iron looking like that because um, you're not going to get a good solder and as you saw I did struggle a little bit and my soldering wasn't the best on that uh, repair but that was purely down to uh, me not cleaning my iron you do need to keep a nice re at least a reasonably clean um, iron tip like um, that I've just given that a quick clean now but like I said if you don't do that you will get um, shoddy soldering so uh, make sure you keep your iron nice and clean I have a uh, piece of cloth, a dampened piece of cloth that I tend to use for um, cleaning iron tips. It seems to uh, work quite well for me. Yes, I think this really does need a new tip um, sooner rather than later. To be honest, it is um, it is a little bit crusty. This um, tip It's cheap and cheap and nasty um, Maplin soldering iron. To be honest. Um, I need to get a new element for my um, Weller, but they are rather expensive. And um, I definitely, uh, I prefer using my Weller, but like I said, um, both my elements, uh, both the um, hand pieces I've got for the Weller have um, failed, unfortunately. And um, they are, like I said, rather expensive. But uh, anyway, um, enough about that, let's get back onto this. So what I thought we'd do is take these um, capacitors off, and we would um, test them with this uh, with these two testers against the uh, the new capacitors and this is something else um, I'll just point out now the old capacitors if you look are axle style and the new capacitors are radial now the reason behind that the cheapest I could find these for um, 4700 US um, radial capacitor, um, sorry, axle capacitors at was about £4 each. Uh, that was just the standard, um, was it, 85 degree version. These are um, 105 degree and they cost me uh, 49p each. 
so you know, obviously it's quite a saving and you can if you can get away with it um, obviously you can do it and I'm going to show you uh, how I'm going to fit these to the board it's not one for the purists I will say but um, like I said this um, it's not exactly a rare computer this and it will allow you to use um, cheaper capacitors for uh, repair in the future you couldn't get away with this on a lot of computers due to height restrictions and things like that but on the Dragon you've got lots of space in that case so we may as well um, utilize it so anyway without further ado I think what I will do is I will um, take the first capacitor off here in fact I will you I will take that capacitor off there first uh, which is a 220 US for the simple reason that the one that we're replacing it with is another um, axial just purely because I still had some of these in stock basically the others I've had to um, buy in so we will um, whip that off and to whip that off we are going to use this thing here um, just a standard solder sucker we also have if we uh, have a quick look over here we have some braid um, we have a solder sucker, we have a flux pen we have some various um, screwdrivers we have some um, wire cutters and that's basically all you need for this you don't need to be uh, using like fancy equipment like that to um, do a simple capacitor replacement and I'll show two techniques for getting these um, capacitors off like I said one is um, the correct way one is a uh, way that the engineers usually do it when they're in a hurry um, we will start with um, this one like I said anyway and we will uh, take this off which I will say the correct way now we look where the capacitor is on the board there flip it over and we can see it's these two connections there what we will just say ah it is okay if we look it's screen printed on the board there's a little plus there to indicate the positive and if you look on the capacitor that's in the same um, place there. can you quite see that on this camera so I can switch over to macro and show you this and then I can switch back so as you can just um, see there there's a little plus down there and there's a little plus on the capacitor and that's really how um, to tell which way around you go because obviously these electrolytics are polarized you don't want to be putting them in um, the wrong way around if that wasn't marked on the board you'd have to remember which way it is already in the board like I said the silk screen's okay on this and you can see that the positive there is up at the top so we will um, whip this off and we will use the uh, the desoldering pump for this and all you want to do is just heat up the um, the pad you wish to remove nice and uh, nice and gentle go in with the desoldering and just suck the solder away like that There's, actually that's been cut really 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 close with the board that's uh, that's going to be a tricky one. Let's just heat this one up. And there we go. Let's do a little bit more on that. It's coming out that one. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of fresh solder. Because that will just help remove this uh, rather old old solder that we've got here. So we'll just, uh, we'll just reheat them. And we'll just add a little bit of fresh solder. And that should help us... Uh, help us get these legs out just heat that up, make sure it's nice and hot, this is a ground plane so there's plenty of copper there you do have to be a bit careful on some of these old boards, these um, phenolic boards like phenolic resin um, that they're made out of because if you um, overheat them you do lift the actual track off the board it used to be a massive problem with the old um, very early colour TVs which I've uh, played with in the past, and if you so much as show, oops, so much as show the um, PCB a um, hot soldering guy, and the uh, tracks lift off. There we go. I think that's uh, that's looking reasonably clear now. Still not quite free. What we can do is we just hold the uh, component with these fingers, and we just go in just heat it might just be able to pop that out this one is being a little bit tricky a 
because that's bent over there. Let's see if we can get this. If you can get one side out, then you usually you're all right. I think we're nearly out with that side. I do have. There we go. That's popped out now. Now we've got that one side out. We can get hold of it and just. Literally just draw it out of the board. Let's give that a little, little bit more heat. It is nearly out that now. There we go, it's out. And there we have it, there's the uh, old capacitor out. And it does. I don't, it's no, no smell, but it just feels a little bit, a little perhaps greasy or uh, like it may have been leaking. So what we're going to do, we'll just put the um, board out of the way for now. We've got the uh, capacitor there. Let's bring in the uh, LCR meter. I'll just try and get you a little bit closer so you can see the actual uh, display on the uh, meter. Now, unlike the other tester, this you do have to uh, make sure which, um, which way around it goes. So it's positive on that side, negative on that side. And let's see what this uh, tells us this capacitor is. Now, amazingly, it's still showing as what it should be, 227 UF. So that's, it is still alright, but like I said, it's um, over 30 years old. So um, now it's out, we may as well replace it, and we're going to replace it with um, this one. It's exactly the same, 25 volt, 220 UF. We'll just stick this one on the uh, meter for completeness, so we can see that that's the negative side there, that's the positive side there. We'll just connect that up again, just press the test meter. That's 20... Uh, 228 um, UF, so it's about the same. You have about a 10% tolerance on these um, capacitors, but uh, that's the new one. Just to show what kind of thing you'll get with one of the cheaper um, testers, I'll bring this uh, my little uh, Chinese one in. And we'll do the same test. The only advantage with this is you don't don't care which way around you put the leads. You can put them either way around and the, this... Because it's a component analyzer, it'll tell you what component it is and uh, what value it is. So hopefully you can see that running. I don't know, can you? And that is telling us that that's a uh, 197 UF. So as you can see, it tends to read, and just to show, basically it tends to read low these cheaper um, instruments. If we actually put the brand new one on there, this will probably read low as well. Let's have a quick look there. Yeah, I mean, that's reading at 204.9, so the whole machine is actually reading the, the capacitance slightly low. I mean, it's not a major problem, but I actually use this thing more than anything, is identifying transistors and um, diodes, of which it does very, very well. You can just use the three legs there, put them on a random diode FET, and it'll tell you what it is and which um, leg is um, what by uh, the one, two, three there. So yeah, it's a useful piece of um, equipment that, but like I say, it's not too accurate for um, actually testing capacitors. Um, really, this is the type of thing you want, which is, like I said, it's a great little piece of equipment that. Anyway, let's get back on and put this new capacitor in the board. I'll just straighten the legs up because um, they have been bent round being in a uh, storage box in my uh, little drawers. I'll just straighten the legs up. And size-wise, it's um, not dissimilar from the one it's replacing, which is a good thing. You really you want to try and keep around about the same size. It's not always possible, especially with the lower values, because um, the new ones are tiny, really, compared with uh, the older ones. So uh, we'll make sure we put this in the right way. And I just like to make sure the legs are bent round in such a way that when it's in the board, you can actually read the value on the um, capacitor. It makes life easier in the future, that. So we'll just pop it through the board. Make sure it goes down nice and flat like that. And while it's 
down there, what I like to do, if you just pull the leg slightly to one side like that, it should hold the component in position. Then all we need to do is go in with the iron and just solder this in place. So we just go in like that. A little bit of solder there. Same on this side. Let's go in. Add your solder. There we go. And then what we need to do is drop, trim off the legs now. We've got two options really for um, for snips. These are 99p. These are not much more. They're about £3 from um, CPC. These are really what you want. You can use these, but using these, um, you'll never get quite as nice a cut to the actual leg as where these, because of the uh, way that they're shaped. They're just designed to go right down to the PCB and um, snip the uh, legs off. So we'll go in there. Like that. And just snip that off. And that's the first, um, first capacitor there replaced. Next we will do this capacitor here. And instead of um, using the older solder sucker, what we will do is... This is basically how most people um, used to change two leg components. You get your finger on the component, you heat up the um, solder, and you literally just roll the component out like that. Then you can grip the component, heat up the solder, and give it a quick, quick pull. There we go, that's the um, component out. You can do that with really up to three-legged components. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for anything uh, bigger than that because you're liable to damage something. But a three-legged component, you can walk out of a board like that. It's fine for capacitors and um, stuff like that. What that has left, however, is it's left the hole. That hole's not so bad. That's open. But it has left that hole there blocked up. And all we need to do for that is um, a little bit of solder wick. And we've got two types of solder wick here as well. This is from the local pound shop. And if you look, it's actually uh, like a metal coloured. And this is decent, so well, it's not decent solder wick. It's okay solder wick from um, China, which has got a uh, copper, basically it's a copper braid. Um, what I always do, no matter which one of these solders you, solder wicks you're using, is um, use a little bit of extra liquid flux on it. And it certainly helps the actual thing work. I'm actually going to use this really cheap, the cheap, nasty um, stuff from the pound shop. And if I just add a little bit of liquid flux to it, you'll see it's actually quite acceptable and it does work okay. We'll go over where we want to remove the thing, just hold the... It takes a little longer than with the um, copper stuff. It's not as good, but it will actually... Oops, not quite there now. This is where he says it and then you can't do it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it has actually done the job. It's removed the solder. And as you can see, it's on the um, solder wick there. But this is not as good as the um, stuff. I mean, this is probably about £2.50 a roll. Like I said, where that's a pound a roll. But you get 1.5 metres on that and you get, what, uh, three quarters of a metre on that. But, like I say, it swings and roundabouts. Uh, I will prefer, always prefer to use that stuff. Anyway, we've got the old um, capacitor out there. And there's the one um, we're replacing. We will quickly just give it a quick test. These are probably all fine. It's just we're doing it just for future proofing, really. This um, I'll put that there. Hopefully you can see the um, leads a little bit better. Um, we really are just doing this to future-proof this um, dragon. Make sure it carries on working for um, the uh, future. So that's positive on that side. This is negative on that side, like that. I'll switch the um, tester on to see what it says. I don't know if you can see that. Now that's not looking good, actually. That's, oh, I don't know. It's a bit high, really. It's a 470UF capacitor. 
and that's reading nearly 600 UF, it's 584 UF, so I would say that's probably getting a little bit tired. They can go up in um, capacitance as they start to age. They can go down in capacitance as well. Let's get the new one, which like I said is a um, radial rather than an axial. And we'll connect that up exactly the same. Let's see what this one um, gives us. There we go, that's much better, 456. And like I say, it's marked 417, you've got about a 10% tolerance on them, so that's a lot more uh, closer to what the value it should be. That's definitely uh, getting a little bit tired. I'm sure if I uh, put that on an ESR meter, we would um, find there's some leakage on it. I might actually try that at some point. Right, anyway, how are we going to fit this to there? And the way we're going to do that is use this piece of equipment here. Which is my PCB drill. And I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill another hole so it can take an upright uh, radial capacitor and that's easy enough to do on this board because if we look we've got these nice big planes so we're still going to be drilling in to the um, nice big plane there so that's the capacitor so basically what we're going to do is we're going to move the ground plane connection from there to over here we uh, put this capacitor in place the wrong way around we can get a rough idea where we're going to actually drill this hole it's not going to be perfect, but it's certainly going to be um, usable. Right, so we're basically going to go here. Where I'm going to take off a little bit of the solder mask there. Like that. I'm going to be drilling a little hole there to take this um, new capacitor. We've got our... Uh, PCB drills here. We need a fairly decent sized one for this. Because it's not a tiny component. Let's have a look there. Let's see what that's like. There we go. Let's have a have a look at that to that. Yes, I think that'll do uh, that'll do okay. These go down to absolutely ridiculously tiny. We load that into the um, chuck of the drill. I think it's got some crud in the bottom in my drill here. That's better. Get that out. Okay. Right, so I might go for one size smaller than that. Just looking at the other hole. In fact, what we can do, let's get this back over there. Yeah, I'm going to go for a size down from that one, I think. When I put it in the drill there, I just thought, no, it's perhaps a little bit bigger, that one. Let's go down a couple of sizes. Let's go to that one there. That's okay. We'll try that in the hole. It's slightly bigger than the original hole, so that'll do. Because I think these um, legs on this new component are actually slightly bigger than the um, originals. So we'll put that down into the chuck. I try and keep it nice and tight like that. You don't want to a load of drill um, sticking out like that because it just makes life harder for you. So there we go, that's loaded in. This connects to my bench power supply. Now it would normally connect to my nice big Farnell power supply but unfortunately that's playing up at the moment so I'm hoping there's going to be enough power in this little um, power supply that I've got to actually uh, power this drill. Let's have a look. Hmm, we're not getting anything there. Let's try that again. There we go. That seems to be working. And all we're going to do is dr basically just drill a little hole in the PCB there. And I'm going to do it on this side. If you do it on the other side, you're just pushing the actual foil off. 
So let's just go in. And that's it. All you need to do, we're through. While I'm here, I'm just going to clean out that hole there for the next capacitor. Switch that off. As you can see, we now have our new hole for our new component. There's the old one, there's the uh, new hole there. So, basically, positive goes in there and negative goes in the new hole. Put the capacitor in place. Slot it down like that, turn it over. Now, as it's sitting like that, it's nice and easy because uh, the weight of the board is going to keep it in place. Get another uh, another little bit of solder. Just heat up round the pad. Flow in the new component, near the new uh, lead. There we go, that's soldered in. And all we need to do, just snip these leads off. That one. And that one. That is that new one in there. And now we've got to do these two here. Now as we notice, both positives are together there, the negatives are on that side there. So we can take these both out at the same time. So let's whip these out of the board. We're going to use that same technique because it's uh, nice and easy. Like I said, you wouldn't really use this on um, on like ICs or anything like that, or even well, not anything that's um, got more than three legs. You're going to struggle with. But uh, if it's got less than three legs, then it's got three legs or less. Sorry, just heating it and pulling it out like that does work quite fine. Like I said on these. Uh, Finelic boards sometimes it can actually be better than getting the board too hot. That's the first one out. That's that one. Let's heat that up again. There we go. So that's the uh, two capacitors out. There we've got them. Let's see what they are. Let's uh, get the old. Um, LCR meter back in. Let's see if I can get you a little bit lower down. See if you can actually see this meter properly. Right, there we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Now that's positive that side there. That's negative there. So that's connected up if you can see. We'll test the, uh, press the test button. I don't know if you can see that or not. Voltage detector is capacitor charged, well the capacitor shouldn't be charged. Let's just try, um, we'll definitely short that capacitor out. That's the other thing that these um, analyzers, the capacitor does have to be discharged. So let's uh, let's see, I've put a crop clip right across it, so that's definitely discharged now. And we will try that again. That's positive on that side, negative on that side, like that. Let's connect it up. Let's try the um, analyzer again. Now that's coming out at 6,500. And that's meant to be... Right, well, I'm back. Sorry about that. My camera decided to just randomly stop recording then. So uh, let's just try that um, bit again because I don't know whether um, you actually got that. So anyway, we've got this um, capacitor connected up and um, I will press the test. Analyzing. It does take a little while for the bigger uh, values. Yeah, this um, capacitor, like I say, it's coming up at um, 6,500 UF, and it should be a 4,700. That is an indication it's probably going high ESR. We will just grab one of the uh, one of the new replacements, and we will um, test that. So let's just connect that up there. Connect that up like that. So that's the new one in test. 
we'll press that there, let's see if you can see this. And there we go, that's much better, that's 4,800, so which that's a lot more uh, closer than what it should be. Like I said, remember, you've got 10% uh, tolerance on um, these capacitors anyway. Right, just out of interest, let's just test that other um, large one that we uh, just removed. Which may have rolled onto the, onto the floor or something. Now where's it gone, where's it gone? It's sod's law, this, they always seem to... Uh, roll off when you least expect me you... oh no <laughs> this is how stupid i am it's here i was using it to prop the meter up so right there we go we'll put that one under there and we will um test this other one that we uh, pulled out of the board so that's positive on there in fact before we do that let's just make sure there's no charge on there because we don't want to kill my meter you're not going to at 16 volts but if this was a larger um, capacitance um, capacitor, and it was you know, had 50, 100 volts on it. You could fry a um, a rather expensive, um, delicate piece of equipment. So uh, you are better off just making sure it is definitely dead. Right there we go. We're connected up like that again. Let's uh, press the power button. Let's analyzing one. Yeah, that one again, 6,400, so it should be 4,700. It's definitely um, gone up in capacitance. So we'll get them out of the way. We might as well test the last of the um, new capacitors as well, just uh, for peace of mind. So these should last pretty much indefinitely, to be honest, because uh, the old ones are 85 degree uh, rated capacitors. The new ones I'm fitting are 105. It doesn't get that hot in the dragon anyway. Again, we've got um, 4,900 on that one, so it's much, much, much better than uh, what we have uh, taken out of the board. So, there you go. That's uh, the new capacitors. All we need to do now is uh, fit these two to the board. And we're going to do that exactly the same way as we fitted uh, that to the board. So, what we're going to do, we'll spin the board over. We can see where uh, we can see where the um, positives are there. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to drill a little hole there, and we're going to drill a little hole there, and that's where we're going to connect the uh, new capacitors. So they're both going to be pretty much together, but uh, that's not a problem. What we will do is we'll scrape a little bit of uh, the mask off here, like that. So this is just the ground point, and we'll scrape a little bit of the uh, mask off over here, like that. So we've got our two points where we're going to make our new um, holes for the new capacitors, one there. You don't want to take too much of the uh, mask off, just enough that you can actually drill a hole and that's where the solder is going to uh, go. So, let's uh, again, switch on the drill. You do need a steady hand for this, I will say. That's the first one done. The second one done. <sighs> do love drilling this um, old type of PCB. It smells of carbolic soap, and I'm one of these strange people that loves the smell of carbolic soap. It's um, to do with what the um, actual... PCB is made out of. I think it's the chemical process that's used. We'll just um, whip, wick away that little bit of um, old solder there, and I'll use the copper um, good desoldering braid for this. And you'll just see how quickly this just whips all that right up. There we go. You can see that how quick that was compared with the um, cheap nasty stuff that I uh, showed you before. So that literally just sucked the whole lot right up. So there we go. We've got our um, holes. We can flip this board back over. You can see where our new um, capacitors are going to fit. So that's the first one goes in there. And goes in that hole, new hole there. Like that. 
and that goes down and the next one goes in there this new hole in there and that one goes down it's going to need a little bit of a push to get them home like that just push that over straighten the legs out I just have to stick something under that board there just to steady it while I solder it there we go in fact I'm not quite happy with that one because the where it went in the board it's just right at the edge of where I took off the um, shadow mask there not shadow mask, the uh, is it shadow mask? I know that's on a TV shadow mask the, shadow, the paint, the mask paint I'm having a senior moment at the moment, I can't remember what it's meant to be called. There we go, that's better. We'll get that back in now. There we are, that's better, that'll solder in better now. Just make sure they're nice and uh, flat down as far as they'll go, like they are. Yep, happy with that. Come in with the uh, soldering going again. Heat up. It takes a little bit of heat on here because it's such a large um, ground plane. I'll do the same on this side. Just heat it up. Get the solder to flow. Need another little bit of solder. Go in there, solder these in. Okay, and then all we need to do is snip off the excess of the legs. And there we are. little bit on the wonky side that but that's not a problem it's one of them slightly bent over but that's absolutely fine and there as you can see that's the board recapped we've got all new um, nice new capacitors on there now what I could do if I really really wanted was just get a little bit of hot glue and just put a little bit of hot glue at either side of these um, radial capacitors just to make sure that they don't move about there's not going to be a problem at all this they're solid enough but um if you wanted to you could oh excuse me you could um get away with doing that like i said i'm not going to bother i don't think i might do just depends um but that's it basically that is the um power board recapped um in the next installment of this video we will uh we will get back onto this I'll just, uh, for safety, so it doesn't get damaged, we'll just slip this back, back where it lives. We may be able to screw that back down now. Yeah, in fact, we will be able to. I'll find the screws and I'll screw that um, back into place. Because we shouldn't have to disturb that again now. We'll just whip these screws in. As you can see, even though we've used um, axial, let's just move the uh, camera up a little. As you can see, even though we've used um, radial caps rather than axial, it's not a problem. It's not going to stop the top of the case going on or anything like that. And if you ever wanted to in the future, as an absolute purist, you could easily revert back and put axial capacitors in there. And so much so. When the axial capacitor was actually fitted, it would actually hide the little hole that I've drilled um, for the opposite leg. So you could revert this back to absolutely original and no one would ever know that it had... Uh, well, unless you took the board out and looked and saw the extra um, holes, but I doubt anyone's that uh, pernickety. There we go, that's reinstalled. I'm uh, quite happy with that now. So in the next video, we will be doing exactly the same on this board here which is the main uh, logic board we've got uh, a couple of hundred UF capacitors and we've got some I think 10 UF um, capacitors to change 
it'll be interesting to see how these have changed in value in relation to the much larger uh, value capacitors up there on the uh, power board. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and um, I hope you um, look forward to part three. So um, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.